Conditions for parallelograms and special parallelograms. Reminder of what we just learned in a previous section. If a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, we know all of these things. By definition, we know the opposite sides are parallel. That's the first. We know that the opposite sides are congruent. In this case, BC equals AD and AB equals CD. We know that the opposite angles are equal. Angle A and angle C are congruent. Angle B and angle D are congruent. We know that consecutive angles, that means in order, any two angles that are in order next to each other, are supplementary. And that's because they're same side interior angles. They're on the same side of a transversal, which is one of the sides, and between the parallel lines. Same side interior angles are supplementary. So any two angles you pick that are next to each other, like A and B, add to 180, or A and D add to 180, or C and D add to 180. We know that the diagonals bisect each other. In this case, that BZ is equal to ZD, and AZ is equal to ZC. You have to memorize these. You need to know these for what we're going to learn just in a moment. By definition, in a parallelogram, opposite sides are parallel. We also know opposite sides are congruent. We know that opposite angles are congruent. We know that consecutive angles are supplementary and the diagonals bisect each other. Memorize those. You need to know them. What we're going to look at now is when is a quadrilateral a parallelogram? Well, we have the definition. We know if the opposite sides are parallel, it would be a parallelogram by definition of parallelogram. But there are lots of reasons we can use. And basically, in every case, it comes from the idea that we can draw on the diagonals and make congruent triangles. With those congruent triangles, we can use corresponding parts of congruent triangles to show that all sides are parallel. And then by definition, it's a parallelogram. So here are the things we can use to prove a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. First one, if one pair of sides is parallel and congruent, so a, a single pair is both parallel and congruent. In this case, BC and AD are congruent, BC and AD are parallel, then we know it's a parallelogram. Second one, if both pairs of opposite sides are congruent, it's a parallelogram. If you draw on that diagonal, you've got side, side, side in those two triangles. Third one, if both pairs of opposite angles are congruent, then it's a parallelogram. The fourth one is if one angle is supplementary to both of its consecutive angles, then it's a parallelogram. Because if angle A and B add to 180, that makes BC and AD parallel. And if angle A and angle D add to 180, those are same side interior angles, it makes AB and CD parallel, then it's a parallelogram by definition. So if one angle is supplementary to both of its consecutive angles, the fifth one, if the diagonals bisect each other, then it's a parallelogram. Now, what I hope that you're noticing is that these reasons to show that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram also come from the properties of a parallelogram. Remember that in a parallelogram, opposite sides are parallel, opposite sides are congruent, opposite angles are congruent. Uh, any two pairs of angles are supplementary. Any consecutive angles are supplementary. And the diagonals bisect each other. These, these are the same thing for the most part, but we're turning it around. 
And the only one, we're using the converse, that is, the only one that's different is the one that says if one pair of sides is both congruent and parallel. Otherwise, they're really the same. So if you can remember those properties that we learned in the previous section, you're going to know all of these except for that one where if one set of sides is both congruent and parallel, then it's a parallelogram. So here are the reasons we have, again, to show that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Both pairs of opposite sides parallel. That's the definition. One pair of sides congruent and parallel. Both pairs of opposite sides congruent. Both pairs of opposite angles congruent. One angle supplementary to both of its consecutive angles. And the diagonals bisect each other. Again, you need to know these, you need to memorize these. The other quadrilaterals, a lot of them get their properties from a parallelogram. For example, a square and a rectangle are parallelograms. So we know the diagonals bisect each other. We know opposite angles are congruent. We know that opposite sides are congruent. All these things come from a parallelogram. So the parallelogram is one of the most important shapes. Reminder, the definition of a rectangle is a quadrilateral with four right angles. That's it. A square has four right angles and four congruent sides. So, a square is a rectangle because a square has four right angles. But a rectangle is not a square because a rectangle doesn't have to have four congruent sides. Since a rectangle has four right angles, its opposite angles are congruent. And since the opposite angles are congruent, it's a parallelogram. If a parallelogram is a rectangle, then its diagonals are congruent. Where we get that one from is take triangle B, A, D, triangle bad, and triangle C, D, A, triangle C, D, A, those triangles are congruent because it's a parallelogram and the opposite sides are congruent. Notice the two triangles share a side, A, D. Notice that they have a right angle. We have one in that corner and one in this corner. And I guess we'd make the one in blue right here. Those two triangles are congruent. And because BD, the diagonals, and AC are corresponding parts of congruent triangles, CPCT, because the triangles are congruent, those diagonals have to be congruent. So we know that the diagonals of a rectangle are congruent. When is a parallelogram a rectangle then? If it has one right angle, it turns out it's a rectangle. So this is a parallelogram. It has one right angle. We know it's a parallelogram, so we know the opposite angles are congruent. So angle A and angle C are automatically both right angles. We know that consecutive angles are supplementary. And since this one's 90 degrees, this one has to be 90 degrees because these two add to 180, they're supplementary. And this one also has to be 90 degrees because these two are consecutive angles and they add to 180. So we have four right angles, therefore it's a rectangle. And remember that a rectangle has congruent diagonals. Well, it turns out if it's a parallelogram with congruent diagonals, then it's a rectangle. Remember that the rectangle is the shape that has congruent diagonals because you're going to use that in other circumstances. For example, what do we know about a square? We already mentioned this. It's a rectangle. So we know a square then has congruent diagonals because it's a rectangle. A rhombus is a quadrilateral with four congruent sides. Since a square has four congruent sides, a square is a rhombus.
A rhombus gets its properties from its diagonals. Remember that it has four equal sides. Since the opposite sides are congruent, it's a parallelogram. Since it's a parallelogram, we know in a parallelogram the diagonals bisect each other. So this piece would be equal to this one. And this one, with three marks, is equal to this one. Look at the four triangles that the diagonals create. Let's number them. One, two, three, four. Take a look at the sides. All of those triangles have the same marks. They have a one, a two mark, and a three mark. All of them do. All four of those triangles are congruent by side, side, side. Now that tells us a few things. First of all, it tells us that the diagonals of a rhombus are perpendicular. Why is that? Well, I know that this angle and this angle are congruent. All four of those angles are congruent. And these two angles are linear pair. They add to 180. And if they're congruent, then each of them has to be 90. And in fact, all the way around is 360 degrees. And 360 divided by 4 is 90. I know that the diagonals of a rhombus are perpendicular. They intersect at a right angle. I know that the diagonals bisect each angle because these, this angle and this angle are congruent. Same thing happens down here. This one and this one are congruent. The corresponding parts of congruent triangles. This one and this one are congruent. And this one and this one are congruent. So each diagonal bisects its opposite angles. The properties you need to know then are that each diagonal bisects its opposite angles and the diagonals of a rhombus are perpendicular. Here are the properties written formally. We know that a rhombus is a parallelogram because the opposite sides are congruent. We know that the diagonals are perpendicular because these four triangles are congruent which means these diagonals have to be 90 degrees because those four angles where the diagonals intersect are congruent. And 360 divided by 4 is 90. We know that a diagonal bisects its opposite angles. 8 and 7 are congruent. 3 and 4 are congruent. 1 and 2 are congruent. And 6 and 5 are congruent. When do we know that a parallelogram is a rhombus? What kind of conditions do we need? If consecutive sides are congruent in a parallelogram, it's got to be a rhombus. Remember, if it's a parallelogram, the opposite sides are congruent already. Now, if consecutive sides, that's these two that are next to each other, are congruent, then they've all got to be congruent because we know the opposite sides are congruent, making all four congruent, making it a rhombus. If the diagonals are perpendicular in a parallelogram, you've got to know it's a parallelogram. Just the fact that the diagonals are perpendicular is not enough. If it's a parallelogram and the diagonals are perpendicular, then it's a rhombus. And if one diagonal bisects its, the opposite angles in a parallelogram, again, you have to know it's a parallelogram first, then it's a rhombus. Here's some questions from your assignment. Determine whether this quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Justify your answer. Note the alternate interior angles. We know that this angle and this angle are alternate interior angles. That makes this side and this side parallel. The problem with this one is that yeah, these two are alternate chair angles, the one I'm marking in blue, but it makes the same set of two sides parallel because those alternate chair angles touch the same set of parallel sides that were already parallel. All I have then is one set of parallel sides, and that's not enough to show that it's a parallelogram. Here's another one. In this one, I know that the one marked with 
two marks makes these sides parallel. See how those angles are alternate sides of the transversal and between the parallel lines? If you look at the other pair, this one and this one, that makes these two parallel. So by definition, it's a parallelogram. Both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. Yes, it's a parallelogram. In question four, the diagonals bisect each other. So it's a parallelogram. The diagonals bisect each other. In question five, I have one set of alternate interior angles making this side and this side parallel. And these two angles, that's this one and this one, they're vertical angles. We already knew they were congruent. The fact that the marks were there didn't help us at all. All I really have then is one set of parallel sides, which isn't gonna make it a parallelogram. This is not a parallelogram. In question nine, you have to know your properties. This question tells us that it's a parallelogram. What do we know about a parallelogram? Opposite sides are parallel. Opposite sides are congruent. Opposite angles are congruent. Consecutive angles are supplementary. The diagonals bisect each other. Are the diagonals perpendicular? Only if it's a rhombus. Doesn't tell us that, so we don't know that. Are the diagonals congruent? Only if it's a rectangle. We don't know it's a rectangle. Does the diagonal bisect opposite angles? Only if it's a rhombus. We don't know it's a rhombus. So those three are out. The diagonals bisect each other? Yes, that's true in every parallelogram. The correct answer is the diagonals bisect each other. And it might be more than one property. Be aware of that. In question 10, this quadrilateral is a square. Which properties are true? Do the diagonals bisect each other? Yes, because a square is a parallelogram. Parallelogram, the diagonals bisect each other in every parallelogram. Do the diagonals bisect opposite angles? Well, that's true in a rhombus. A rhombus has four equal sides. A square is a rhombus. So yes, this is a true statement. Are the diagonals perpendicular? That's only true in a rhombus. A rhombus has four equal sides. A square has four equal sides. So that's true in a square because it's a rhombus. Are the diagonals congruent? Well, that's only true in a rectangle. Is a square a rectangle? Does a square have four right angles? So this, in this case, they're all four true. This quadrilateral is a rhombus. Which properties are true? In a rhombus, reminder, opposite sides are congruent because all sides are congruent. The diagonals are perpendicular only in a rhombus and the diagonal bisects each angle of the rhombus. Does a rhombus have four right angles? Only if it's a square. This, that doesn't work. Opposite angles are congruent. That's true in any parallelogram. And a rhombus is a parallelogram because opposite sides are congruent. So yes, opposite angles are congruent. Are consecutive angles supplementary? That's true in any parallelogram. And a rhombus is a parallelogram. So that one's good. Consecutive angles are congruent. Are angles in order congruent? Is this angle and this angle congruent? The answer would be no. Opposite angles are congruent. Consecutive angles are supplementary. Consecutive angles are not congruent. Around question 14, there's a group of questions that are just random questions about these different shapes. The idea that if I took a rhombus and I put in one right angle, that would make it a square. Or if I took a rectangle and made consecutive sides congruent, then it would be a square. With this group of questions, you just need to have your properties out in front of you and your definitions and think carefully as you answer each question. 
Are all angles in a rhombus congruent? That would be a no. Opposite angles are congruent, but not all of them. That'd only be true if they were 90 degree angles, which would be true in a rectangle and a square. So this one is false. In question 23, we have a quadrilateral that is a rhombus. If it's a rhombus, it's also what? Is it a parallelogram? Yes, because a rhombus has four equal sides and opposite sides are congruent. That makes it a parallelogram. A rhombus is, of course, a rhombus. Is it a rectangle? Not necessarily. It doesn't have to have a right angle, nor is it necessarily a square. So only two we know are true is a rhombus is a rhombus and a parallelogram. When you get to a question like 24, and it says parallelogram, draw a picture. Draw yourself a parallelogram, doesn't matter what it looks like. They tell us that E, you just need to go in order, clockwise or counterclockwise, E, F, G, H is a parallelogram. E and G are supplementary. Now, E and G are opposite angles. If E and G are supplementary and they add to 180, then each of them has to be 90 degrees. Determine whether it's a rectangle. Well, does this make it a rectangle? Remember, we know consecutive angles are supplementary. So if this one's 90, this one's got to be 90 to make 180. And if this one's 90, this one's got to be 90 to make 180. In other words, my picture's not right. This is really a rectangle. It has four right angles. Yes, if one angle of parallelogram is 90, then they all are. No, none of the tests are rectangle fulfilled. Yes, the diagonals are congruent. So this is the best answer. In question 27, we know we have a parallelogram, and we know one diagonal bisects a pair of opposite angles. That's true in a rhombus. You might be tempted to put square because a square is a rhombus, but the best description is a rhombus because it would always be a rhombus every single time. It wouldn't necessarily be a square. It would work in a square. That's not the best answer because it wouldn't always be a square. It would always be a rhombus. Only in a rhombus are the diagonals perpendicular and do the diagonals bisect those opposite angles. In question 31, we have a parallelogram with congruent diagonals. The figure that has congruent diagonals is a rectangle. Rectangle is the best answer. Again, you might be tempted to put square because a square does have congruent diagonals, but it wouldn't have to be a square. It would have to be a rectangle. A square is one example, whereas it's always true in a rectangle every single time. So don't put square because a square is only one example. It's always a rectangle every single time. Rectangle is the best answer. 